So I think I've selected which set it's going to be installed in. Um, it's going to be my Swiss Pyard 4038. Um, now as you can see there's no mounting holes for mounting this. Um, so it basically says you uh, you stick something insulating on underneath it here like this and then you uh, stick that to wherever you're going to mount it so we will do that first uh, the one unfortunate thing about the Payard is I have almost no documentation I have a very sketchy circuit diagram but there's no schematics or anything so we will be doing it uh, by eye as they say Okay, and I think uh, keep anything that might short circuit away from the uh, chassis. And I'll just take another hot glue on there and put it on the chassis like that, so it will all be reversible if uh, if needs be. So here we go. Here is the inside of the 4038. Um, or sorry, 4308. I always get that wrong. Um, and so the instructions for the little gadget say you need to make it put it as near as you possibly can to the tuning condenser. Um, now in theory I could just glue it on right here but I think that would be a little bit too uh, obvious. There's space around here. Okay hey guys, well this is not looking good in terms of um, building it into the set easily. Um, this is the band selector uh, switch mechanism here. And so there is a wafer here. There is a wafer here. There is a wafer right at the very bottom here. And then there is a wafer here. However, this one right here has almost no contacts in it. It just has one or two at the other end. Um, and pretty much every contact on all these wafers are used. So there's no unconnected tags or lugs on any of these wafers. And so I have a feeling that this, um, I'll see if I can illustrate it a bit more clearly. But I have a feeling that this was a factory only mo installation if you uh, wanted to get the FM module because I don't know if you can see this but right here in this wafer it's just all empty uh, empty cutouts there's no lugs on it at all except there's one or two around at the back um, so yeah I don't think that's gonna I don't think that's gonna fly um, the only thing I'm thinking I could do is if I glue something onto this central shaft here or screw something onto it that could act as an actuator mechanism and then I might be able to mount some sort of a micro switch thing onto the end here so that when it comes round to the uh, FM position and I'm not sure which one that is <laughs> um, it would activate the micro switches uh, or a switch 
So that's what I'm toying with at the moment. Um, and uh, yeah, so this one's not going to be easy. And uh, it is extremely crowded underneath this chassis here. Um, so even simple things like tapping off the 6.3 volts um, for the power supply is going to be fun in games because the easy all the tubes are down underneath all sorts of other stuff. So uh, that'll be fun. But if I can come up with some sort of a MacIver solution for the switching here, um, then yeah, I'll give that a go. Um, so this is the only documentation I have been able to find anywhere that relates to this particular set. Um, it's very bad quality, uh, so you can't really read most of the text. Um, but in terms of trying to get a handle on how I might uh, modify this, um, I'm not sure it's going to help because, okay, I guess we can reasonably assume this guy here is the uh, tuning condenser. So we know we can where we'd break it to uh, connect it up to the module. In terms of the band selector, as near as I can figure it, um, there is assuming this is a representation of a wafer, then there's one here, probably a second one here, a third one here, and maybe a fourth one here, a fifth one here. And a sixth one right here. Um, now, there are only four physical wafers in my set, but of course, they might be double sided. Uh, I haven't really looked at them that closely. And so, the one curious thing is this little connector right here, because there's obviously one connector here which goes to pick up. That's really easy to follow. Um, and this one here is obviously the regular AM uh, heading off. Uh, and then there's this one right here which comes down and goes over to what looks like a, if you like a terminal strip or a connector of some sort. Then one of these, I think this, this one is like a chassis connection. And this one here goes off uh, to another wafer here. So this looks like the sort of thing where you might connect if you like the FM uh, module in the original setup. Who knows? Who knows? Um, so yeah, I'm not sure if this helps me very much. Okay guys, so what I've decided to do as a first attempt at uh, coming up with a MacIver solution here is this is the um, center shaft of the uh, band selector switch and in this what I'm calling the six o'clock position where it's if you like directly facing um, this is the FM position uh, if I go one more like the seven o'clock position that's the uh, pickup uh, and then the others are in the five four three position so so um i have a bit of space here and so if i put some sort of a little activator on here that is gonna activate a micro switch when it gets to the six o'clock position here um that in theory might work so the idea then is if this is the cross section of the um of the activation shaft and the uh, band selector, I fit some sort of a little activator piece of metal onto the onto it, so that when it comes round to this bottom like six o'clock position here, it will press on the uh, micro switch and activate it, and then when I go on to the seven position, it'll release it again, or when I go back to the other positions, it will release it again. But I'm gonna give this a go first uh, before I do anything else with this particular project because this is kind of the whole thing will sink or swim based on whether or not I can get some sort of a mechanism here working. And so this is what we're going to try first. Well, maybe I don't need to go ordering micro switches. I went hunting around in my old box of uh, components from the 70s when I was uh, a computer tech. Uh, some more discovery. Um, I may remember I mentioned this connector here. 
that uh, clearly is what was the uh, way that the uh, FM module originally was hooked up but I didn't see it anywhere in the set well it was so obvious <laughs> it's these pins along here which are pretty obvious really once you figured it out so I did a bit of wire tracing and uh, so um, that helps a little bit because these two pins here give me my uh, 6.3 volts AC for the heater which I will use to power my module this one over here is where you hook up the audio output of the FM uh, and so that will automatically route it through the switchery back to the uh, wiper of the volume pot I guess it's not a huge saving because instead of soldering it over here I soldered it over here but hey every you know at least it'll make it easier and this pin over here is switches the B plus uh, to the original module so obviously that's of no uh, no use to me <coughs> And another happy uh, coincidence, these uh, little connectors are uh, 2 mil, and so I had a bunch of uh, 2 mil plugs, and they fit quite nicely in, the, in these little sockets, so I can even do it without having to have it permanently soldered in. Well guys, much uh, reflection and trial and error later, um, I've sort of given up on the micro switch for the AM FM selector. I tried all sorts of things. The challenge is the uh, unpredictable amount of travel it takes to uh, to make the contact and break the contact. Um, so I thought an alternative option is the um, the central shaft of the uh, band selector is actually at chassis, connected to chassis. Uh, and so theoretically that's one contact that I need and so what I'm working on right now and I'll, time will tell is to fit a wiping contact onto that shaft so that it will swipe across uh, the uh, FM position and then a little bit of MacIvory creative work here with a insulated contact so uh, this is a drawn pin thumbtack <laughs> which will get fixed into this piece of wood and the wire soldered onto the other end of it here and then this slot here will go over the end so we will have uh, me I need two hands to do this uh, I can't really show uh, figure out a good way of setting the camera up to show you this but Basically this piece will mount onto the side frame here and the contact is here and so as I rotate around it will swipe past the top of that uh, drawing pin uh, and make my contact and the wire it will solder to the, uh, to the drawing pin and we'll run it out the hole down the bottom here or this little slot and run it off over to the other side of the chassis. So a dry fit, uh, I'm not sure I can do this and get my hands out of the way. So here is the uh, wooden block, here is the drawing pin connector. Uh, it's not set to the FM position now. If I move it to the FM position, then we have connectivity. If I go away, I don't. So that's the idea, that's the plan. And we can cosmetically make it look a little nicer later. Uh, <laughs> Alright guys, well there it is. It's not pretty, but... So let's pick up FM, short wave, medium wave, and long wave. <laughs> so, on with the rest of it. So I gave up. This is the most practical place to fit the module. Actually on the tuning condenser. There's no room underneath it. In theory, it would fit on the on the chassis here, but it, once it's there, it's completely inaccessible. So if you had to do troubleshooting or or change wiring or anything, it would be impossible. So it ain't pretty, but that's where it's going. And so uh, 
and I will have the audio coming over to here and I will have the uh, 6.3 volts coming up from here and then the rest of these guys are all ready to wire up and we should be good to go So this is my 6.3 volts AC which will go over to the top of the board here. I have to check which is V1 and which is V2 because it's important which which one goes to chassis. So AC1 goes to chassis and AC2 doesn't. And AC1 is the one right next to the... I think we're getting close to mock-up. Uh, just need a wire for the antenna, I think. So if this is antenna, 6.3 volts AC, then we have the AM FM selector. We have the two connectors to the, uh, uh, to the variable condenser. We have the audio out. Just have one last little piece to do over here. This uh, end connector is not connected, so I'm gonna run this one to chassis.
after. That one will do. Yeah, the, <coughs> the resistance of the uh, 6.3 volt tap is so low that uh, it gives me continuity on both sides but the one that has the lower resistance to chassis is the one that I've connected to chassis so hopefully we are okay okay next up is uh, test um, now it's rather late and so I think what we'll do is we'll close the session for today. Uh, go get uh, go get a cup of coffee and uh, we'll get back to this tomorrow uh, when we'll check our work. Uh, okay guys, we're not out of the woods here. Um, so this is the initial setup just to test it. I just reconnected the speaker. Um, and at the moment it works fine but it's using the battery to power it you'll notice the 6.3 volts is disconnected so if I connect up the 6.3 volts I will show you the result cover this guy up so we don't short anything out so this is the ground end of the winding so at zero volume there's no volume I don't know if you can hear it. We have almost what sounds like, you know, bad smoothing caps in the power supply. So that 6.3 volts is problematic. It is the same. It's still working. But you have that that the drone music station so we're almost there but we're not quite there yet at least my switching thing works 
and I didn't do any damage to the rest of the module putting it in there. Uh, since the mic was far away from the speaker, um, I'll turn it on again. Here we go, power up. And that's the noise. So here's, I think, the source of the problem. I'm the power supply on this little module that converts the 6.3 volts to DC. Uh, isn't quite doing a good job. So you got about 20-25 millivolts of ripple on the uh, supply, which you don't have when you're using a battery. So going to have to think about it because uh, I can't really do anything with the module itself and so I think my only option is to make another DC power supply coming off the 6.3 volt winding and then hopefully get clean DC that I can then feed to the little module but that would be for a later phase of the project I think right now we're gonna call it installed <laughs> and uh, Later on, we'll see if we can install it better. Working in 9 to 5 è una canzone scritta, quella che abbiamo appena ascoltata, scritta dalla leggendaria icona di Nashville, Dolly Parton, canzone il cui... So there you go guys, it's not really a success, it's a partial success. Hope you found it a little bit interesting and uh, I hope there will be a follow-up to this in the not too distant future uh, because I have tons of space over here on the right of the chassis so I may well investigate making a separate uh, AC to DC supply here and then run it over and feed it directly into the DC inputs of this little guy. It's a little unfortunate I did, as I said before, try routing the wire all sorts of different ways, even using a screened wire for the 6.3 volts. But it's not, I think, a question of radiation of the uh, of the uh, cable. It's just the power supply is not able to to do it, convert it properly and cleanly. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. More to come on this one. <laughs>